the path to the scientific method is to declare and even refine one's methodology, make it public, so that it can be repeated by other researchers and validated. And I shall follow strictly this scientific path. Therefore, allow me to define my methodology of how I uh, mine the esoteric knowledge. And uh, lifetime of research has shown to me that uh, you can define uh, a method, uh, an esoteric method, a methodology which tackles esoteric knowledge. And the first great principle of this is what I define as the fact that dialectical opposites are both true. This idea was defined by Heraclitus as early as 5th uh, century before Christ. Heraclitus of Ephesus, the uh, uh, town in Ionia, and uh, he said that uh, he, he tried to demonstrate how opposites are true and he said that, for example, the road going up is the same as, as the road going down. I mean, here it is, let's show it. If this is the inclined road, the road going up is precisely the same as the road going down. So, dialectical opposites are both true. This is the number one principle I shall follow. Secondly, of course, when you uh, come across a gem, uh, a pure knowledge, then you try uh, to uh, examine it, right, left, center, backwards, forwards, etc., so that it is really uh, not different from uh, modernity, it is really not different from the approach of a scholar uh, studying a subject and studying every aspect of it. Based on this method, therefore, I will suggest that the Bible is a historical document. Uh, I shall approach the Bible as a document of history and factual knowledge, all camouflaged within esoteric methodology. Why these layers and layers of camouflage and hiding? Because in ancient times, uh, wise people were convinced that knowledge is power and knowledge as power was not safe in the hands of the rabble uh, simply because ignorance uh, and superstition and all that would, uh, would become very dangerous, uh, digested by ordinary people who were anyway 90% illiterate. So therefore, um, that explains why uh, knowledge accumulated in treatises like the Bible had to be protected from the democratization of knowledge, which, believe it or not, is only a modern phenomenon and especially wonderfully promoted by the Internet. I am all for the Internet and for the democratization of knowledge. So, uh, going back, therefore, to the Bible, there are um, three extremely important dimensions to it. Uh, the Bible um, has an overall arching principle which speaks of the historical facts of life on this earth, uh, Genesis, especially the Genesis, we call it Genesis, uh, which is the Greek title of the original uh, Hebrew, uh, in Greek means uh, birth, being and becoming. Philosophically speaking, these are huge concepts, but they are all within the word of Genesis in classical Greek. 
already therefore here is an element which suggests that the Bible is about origins and about ends, about the Alpha and the Omega of the history of mankind. Now, um, within this framework, intellectual framework, there is a very, very important message uh, which needs to be deciphered, decoded, and passed through the millennia. A message uh, which is a warning to human stupidity as much as a hope for human intelligence. Uh, let's, and it is, it, is in, in, it is focused and concentrated in the flood story. Let's start, therefore, uh, from Noah's flood. Please note that Noah's flood is the, absolutely the climax and the peak of the Bible. In other words, this is a remarkable observation which people have not been aware of that the Bible starts with a huge climax which any, in any modern novel uh, is unsurpassed. And it is a climax about climate. It is a climatic climax, to make a pun. So, uh, within this, therefore, uh, is concentrated the past the present and the future of mankind. And this is how I shall try and explain it. Uh, about the past, the flood is about not, as most people, in fact everybody, and to uh, conquer my uh, uh, sort of uh, humility, I should say, probably this is the very first time that anyone is saying this, the flood story is not about the sinking of the planet. We shall see how it may be. But for the moment, the whole world thinks that it is about the flood, the flooding of the planet and the sinking of the earth in the oceans. What I'm going to suggest is through esoteric methodology that in fact its dialectical opposite is the first meaning of this. In other words, it is not about the sinking of the planet, it is in fact about the birth of life. How life has been born under the oceans, at volcanic vents, and this is only uh, a, a modern almost scientific dogma now, but it is modern discoveries, scientific discoveries. We are only now understanding what was already in the flood story, which is that life started volcanically under the oceans through uh, in extremis, through volcanic eruptions, etc. Now here again another first. Most people think that, because they think that it is about the sinking of the earth, most people think that uh, the flood is just one event of waters pouring from heaven. No one seems to have understood that the flood is not one phenomenon, but it is all the phenomena of natural consequences, of unimaginable volcanic eruptions, and unimaginable, therefore, tsunamis, uh, storms, uh, oceanic huge natural disasters, landslides, although landslides under the ocean. So, in other words, believe it or not, uh, this is again uh, a new understanding of the, the flood as not a single phenomenon of waters, but rather the whole natural processes coming together to cause it. And this is the birth of the first piece of land emerging from the oceans 